All right, in this video, we're gonna look at another type of list and I'm gonna call this one the material design list. This, what you see here is a component. And if I tap this button right here, this is going to open up a material design task or plugin. At any given point in this tutorial or maybe part two or how many ever parts it takes me to get this whole idea across to you, you will see some flashes across the screen. Those are going to be there for teaching purposes when I actually start going over that part. But again, this is what pops up. And if I press this little button down here, I can start adding items to my list. So I'm gonna add milk. And I can also add multiple items by separating them with a comma. And when I add those items like that, you'll see that it comes up as one piece. But once I accept by pressing this check, it's important to understand check here will accept the list. So when I check that, notice it's going to break these items up on my component in KOWP. And now if I want to open my list back up again, now these pieces are separated. So a comma is a way that I have it set up in KOWP to break each item up uh, as I add items to my list. Now I'm going to swipe away with my thumb. I'm going to swipe away milk, cheese, and bread because it's Friday, right? So now if I check this to accept it, what's going to happen is all of those items are removed from the list. I love this setup versus the other two tutorials that I made in the past, one where I used a tasker scene and one where I used a notepad app to create a list. This one here allows you to easily add items, remove items, edit items, and check this out. I'm just gonna go back and add two more items real quick. So I have two additional items, therefore we're gonna see three of them here. So item one, another item, and beer. Suppose I open my list back up one more time. And suppose I swipe away another item in item one, but I'm thinking to myself, oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. I wanna keep those items. If we press the back button, no changes will be made and we still maintain our items. This works great. So if you make a mistake, just press the back button. There are two little glitches that I've run across with this plugin before I start talking about it any further. 90% of the time, it works just fine. That one time out of 10 times, or roughly 10% of the time, if I press this button, a black screen will come up like that. I don't really know why. I have talked to the developer about it, but there's an easy fix for this. All I have to do is press my recent apps button, and I tap on material design plugin, and it's going to open that list back up. Um, ironic that that bug happened right then. But like I said, about nine times out of 10, it works just fine. So I do want to point that out to you. And the other little issue, if you will, that I have run across with this is that if by mistake you press the home button to back out of this list, what's going to happen there is it will cause the task to kind of freeze in Tasker. Uh, I, I, I don't have a fix for that yet, but the back button is what we want to pay attention to if we want to just back out of our list and make no changes. So as you can see, no changes were made and we have our list right there. So what am I using to create this list and what am I going to be showing you for part one of the tutorial? So the additional plugin that you're going to need is the material design plugin. It's uh, the guy who made it. He also has another plugin that's snack bar. I have used snack bar in the past. The guy's name is Nick Moen. I have used his snack bar plugin. So when I saw this one and I was trying to create this tutorial, I was thinking, okay, let me go ahead and buy the material design plugin. I don't know what you get versus what you don't get if you get just the free part, but you can pay like a dollar and eight cents from the website, or you can pay it directly from the app once you download it from Google Play. Uh, pay a dollar and eight cents, buy the guy's soda, or pay his phone bill. Either way, you're going to get full access to all the stuff that comes with the Material Design plugin. And by full access, there is a lot of stuff. The one I'm going to be using here is the list activity. But notice there are a ton of other pieces that we can use with this material design plugin. And that material design plugin is what you see right here. We can change colors, we can change the buttons, and there's a lot of other stuff we can do. For example, here, if I press that and I press clear list, if I check that, now I have no items in my list and that's what's showing up in KOWP. It works great with the exception of that little black screen that I showed you a moment ago from time to time. But again, an easy fix, press the recent apps button, open up that plugin and you're good to go. And then also remember, don't use the home button to back out of the plugin. Two little setbacks. Let's go ahead and go into Tasker for this first part and I'm gonna show you how to customize this list activity. So inside of Tasker, I have a task already created. It's the material design list. I will be sharing this on 
tasker files my tasker files that you can get linked over at my website this is the entire task and a lot of these pieces you may say man there's 29 pieces of this thing but a lot of them are flashes and that's there for teaching purposes now it is going to take me a while to go over each piece with you individually uh, the first and most important piece is actually showing you how to create that card that pops up that list activity so i'm just going to back out of this and i'm going to add a new task So my new task called Toot List, I'm going to go ahead and add that plugin right now inside of Tasker. And the one you want is Material Design Plugin, assuming you have downloaded it. And uh, I guess it, I don't know what comes with it with the free one, the list activity is what we want. And let's go ahead and configure this. And for now, we're just gonna go over some of the basics in this part one, cause there's a lot to soak in here. But once you understand it, this is far easier in my opinion, in, in terms of being able to customize it add stuff to it, remove stuff from it. But the hard part is gonna be wrapping your head around the variables. So here we go, title of the activity. This is the title. And you're gonna see where this text is gonna show up in a minute. The color of the activity bar, I'm gonna make that a red for right now. And that's going to be the background to this title when we see it pop up in a minute. Enter items of the activity list. Now we will definitely be editing this in part two, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add some items and I'm going to separate them with a comma. And each time we separate them with a comma, it's going to create a different item in our list. The color for our status bar is when we open up this card, this list that you saw a moment ago, it's going to give us a color to this status bar up here. I'm going to give it a green. That may not be the best color to pick, but nonetheless, I'm just going to show you where all this stuff is coming from. The navigation bar is going to be the color of this bar down here. I'm going to make that a blue. The color of our items. This is gonna be the actual text that we see here. I'm gonna make those a black. The list of icons, you can put icons beside each individual item that appears. I'm not gonna cover that for right now, but I will talk about the background color of the activity. That's gonna be the background in which this text shows up on. I'm gonna make that a light gray. So something like that right there. And we'll come back and look at some more of these things, maybe in this video or maybe in part two. But for now, I just want to check this and I want to back. All right. So what we have here is this configured list activity. Let's go ahead and test run this. And what you notice is that here's our list activity. We're missing some buttons, but notice we do have those items that we added. We had the red activity bar, the green status bar, the blue navigation bar, the black text for our items, and the light gray background in which the text shows up. So that's how we generally configure this. Now we did have some more buttons on the one that I showed you back at the beginning. We had like a, a three dots, we had a fab down here, and I think we had a little magnifying glass up here. So I wanna talk about that, how to get those items to show up, and we'll go ahead and do that right now actually. So I'm just gonna back out of here using the back arrow. That's going to treat it as a dismissed, and I'm gonna talk about that in a, in a second, some of these commands that we're gonna get. But let's go back and configure this uh, plug in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna go ahead and go to list attributes or attributes. I wanna select swipeable, menu options, and the fab button. Now we can mess around with some of these other ones maybe a little bit later or I'll leave it up to you to kind of mess around with them. But for now, these are the three that I have been using. So I'm gonna press okay, check that, and I'm going to back out of this. Let's give it a test run and see what's different. Now inside of here, we have our floating action button. We have our menu options, which clears the list. And then we have this magnifying glass. I might talk about the magnifying glass later. But now that we have these things in here, this plus will automatically, this is what I like about this plugin, automatically this is create an item. So we don't have to do any coding for this to actually get that screen to pop up. That floating action button will trigger that to happen. So I'm gonna add another item. And as you can see, it is added to our list. By us implementing the swipeable, we can swipe away stuff. As you can see, I'm swiping things away. I'm using the thumb on my device. And then what we can also do with this menu button is we can clear our entire list right now. And if I check this in apply, it, it's gonna be a clear list. However, when I cover part two, there's a lot more going on in the background there. But I do wanna go ahead and show you these local variables, some of these that I will be referring back to in part two of this tutorial. And the two main ones are gonna be percent %ls list with the parentheses. That is going to be an array of the items on our list and percent %ls command. So keeping those two in mind, I'm not really using this one too much, 
but these two I will be. So I'm going to back out of here and I'm going to add a flash. And inside of this flash, I want to see uh, just basically once I'm done running this task or towards after I've seen that little card pop up, I want to flash a little bit of information across the screen. One of them is I want to see what's in my list. So it's going to return an array separated by commas. Items are going to be separated by commas on percent ls list. Also, what I want to see is ls list with a number. This is going to be helpful in part two as well. This will return the number of items that we have in our list. And there is one additional piece I want to see, and that is going to be ls command. And you'll see why that's going to be important in a second. So let's back out of here and let's run this thing one more time for testing purposes, or maybe a few more times. So you may notice, oh, I thought we cleared our list. Well, that's where part two of this tutorial is going to come into play because there's a lot of things that go on in us having to clear the list, recreate a list. But um, yeah, the, the flow control is kind of crazy, but it works great once you get it all set up. So suppose I add another item to my list right now. So when I add that item to my list, if I check this, now you're probably going to have to pause the video and I want you to look at what flashes up on the screen. Pause it right now. All right, so you saw toilet paper, milk, and those other items. And then you also saw a percent LS list. That tells you how many items we have in our list. And then you also saw a LS command that said accepted. Go back and look at that again. I'm going to run it one more time. Now I'm going to lose the toilet paper uh, when I run this because toilet paper is not part of that original list that I had. So check. We got four items, those four items, and accepted. Now let me run this one more time. And instead of me pressing the check, let me press the back button. Do not press the home button. Press the back button. Notice we're going to have dismissed. Those two commands, accepted and dismissed, mainly dismissed is going to be a key piece in us uh, allowing our list to remain unchanged when we go into part two. Um, part two is going to cover how to take this list, create a global list from it, and then from time to time you're also going to run across this weird deal where even though you don't have an item in your list, the plugin adds one anyway, but I have a way to clear that out using some regex. And again, if you want to preview that, I'm going to um, upload this to the tasker files, by the way, but this entire task here, even with the flashes, the flashes is what makes it look longer than what it actually is. But all of this here is what you saw running back at the very beginning, that blue list activity card that flashed up on the screen. I was adding items, removing items. And then, then when I did that, it was returning. When I opened this card back up, it was returning my list items back. That's the way I had this set up here. And I want to share that with you in part two. That's going to be a longer tutorial because we have to go over each little individual piece to our flow control inside of Tasker. And there you have it. That's the part one to material design list. Uh, using the Tasker plugin, and that is it for this video. I hope it helped.